Well, talking about editing and time of television, I mean, starting, I mean, I go you back more than me, I to two-inch days back in the late 60s. I mean, I would have made simple programmes like Play School, which is a 15-minute programme with perhaps two or three cut edits in it. So that's a, the way I started editing, going on to making a drama, say that's a 90 minute show and that would in those days, that would take two days. I mean, nowadays it would be a lot longer, but in those days it didn't, studio time was expensive. I mean, using one of these, I started using one of these in 1980, mid 80s, I guess, started using these on Ski Sunday when we had the little stories coming in. So you'd make 10 minutes a day, 12 minutes, yeah, 12 minutes a day was, was good making a story a broadcastable story. Um, That's good. Yeah. Doing a, a football match on a Wednesday night, you do the first half and that edit could be 25 minutes long. So you'd knock that out in an hour and a half um, because you had to, because mm. you had to get on the air. Mm. Um, so it was always needs must. You have to get, you have to make as much as the time you've got left. So you've only got the time up to transmission to get it done. So you've just got to cut your, cut your cloth, get on with it. If you've got time, you stop and twiddle about. But yeah, everything I did post 85 would have been on an edit controller. So I would have done thousands of hours of television on one of these things. Me not as much, no, no, not nearly as, not nearly as much as that, but I spent a lot of time in cutting rooms. I suppose the difference is with making documentaries. The, the first editor I ever worked with was a film editor, it was a wonderful editor called Charles Davis, and I still work with him actually. He. For him, editing was making movies and it was all about subplots and teases and telling the story and keeping the audience with you. So a lot of what I did in the cutting room was about that. And it was either using the commentary or the way that we shifted sequences around, put the end at the beginning and the beginning. So there was, it was a slightly different sort of editing. But that, I mean, I'm incredibly impressed about that. <laughs> Twelve and a half minutes, you know, is, is, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. That most of that came with, I mean, what you were alluding to earlier is actually log, what we call logging, which is looking at material. Now, a very good producer friend of mine, Graham Wellham, used to tell all his new trainees, if you're tired of logging, you're tired of life. Because if you did not log a football match and you did not know <laughs> where the salient points were, there is no way you could get it on the air. Yeah. So logging in sports department was fantastic. It was reams and reams of very, some people could do it shorthand, mm. but every single piece of, every goal kick, every foul was logged. And then as you go, star, star, three stars, goal. Yes. Right, that's got to go in, because if you muck it up, you look fairly silly with a 4-3 football mm. match if you've only got six yeah. goals in it. You do look really stupid and you're in big trouble. So logging, knowing what your material is, is absolutely crucial when it comes to making any sort of yeah. television, I think. And you wouldn't um, have had a life because you've been spending your whole life in a small dark room. Indeed, I did spend my life in a small dark room <laughs> for 40 years, yes. I would have last done this for, in anger in 2007. Um, in fact, driving one of these very same controllers and I did that on a Ski Sunday World Championship in Sweden. Um, after I'd retired so before that I was using one of these every day as I was working so it there is a certain amount stuck in me head certain amount I can't I'm obviously taking a little bit of time to find all the all the buttons and what I could do but you, they really are very clever machines and with a bit of manipulation and juggling between this and the vision mixer you really can produce very professional results I know on non-linear which everybody went to when I was working people would come out and say, this is marvellous, but you can do a lot on these with a bit of thought and with the use of pre-read, which will allow you, allows you to multi-layer on the same tape. Now that is a big, um, that was a big innovation mm. for us. Um, whether we can show that later, I don't know. But That's so now we've got, we've got the in time for our uh, edit, which is 10.02.00, and I've come out a second after we started the first quote. So we've overlaid a bit of uh, sound underneath that. So I've obviously done vision only because we don't want to wipe the sound of the man we put down. So we've got an in for the wide shot and uh, we've got an in and an out for the recorder. So we've got two times now. We've got an in and an out, six second duration. Do the preview, we always do a preview when you're doing something like this in case you get it wrong, hopefully. 
Well, it helps, yeah. Helps you play darts, I guess. <laughs> so we'd now perhaps have a little bit of music coming up. Um, nine, two, da 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 da. A bit of music here, perhaps, and then three, four. The bad side was his treatment of people. So we've come, we've come out after the bad side. Now I would want to come out between those. Personally, I would want to come out between those two. The bad side was cut. That, that's what I would want to do. Yeah. So I would go there. The gap between was and his, and I would mark that new out. Well, it's ten frames different, so it's not a lot, but it's just to my mind something I would like to do. So mm -hmm. we can rehearse that again. It's called refinement. It's refinement. Uh, but if we were on the air in an hour, we wouldn't bother to pre just yeah. do it. Yeah. And you'd have to trust that what you've done is correct. Blah, blah, blah. Music, music, music. The bad side was his treatment of people. OK, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> so we Very hit the good. red button again. Yes, it's, uh, it's remarkable, actually, that even after all the time I've been away from the industry. The bad side was his treatment of... I guess it's a bit like riding a bike. I mean, it, it's, there's so much of it after 40 years editing mm. stuck in my head that even the old uh, dementia or whatever it is <laughs> doesn't make a way. So we've, we've got the opening shot on now. We can just check that that's there. That's stuck. That's good. So we had another shot to go in at the end of uh, the Caligula the other piece. Caligula by. Yeah was, what could term him, the Caligula of the cinema. What I would normally do is, um, while Ross is um, making the edits and scrolling things backwards and forwards, I'd be writing what we call a scratch commentary, which is basically a rough commentary. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because we know that there's going to be some, I'm going to have to guide the story somehow. So, uh, and after this first bit of the film, where we're going to get three or, three or four bits of sync, where we get the idea that this guy's a bit of a tyrannical boss, that will lead us into this next bit, where we sort of expound the story slightly. And we'll mention this guy's name. His name is John Davis. Um, in the 1950s, Pinewood Studios was run by John Davis. To some, he was a tyrannical boss. To others, he was a genius. So it'd be something like that. Um, and then you'd probably come back to Lewis Gilbert, and he was saying, actually, he was kind of good, but um, we hated him, you know. The journalism is quite instinctive, isn't it? Well, yes, yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, some people shy away from commentary these days, and it's, it's a little bit sad, because it's a little, it's a skill in its own right, really. Um, and it's very economical. Um, if you need to get, if you need to say something quickly, or if you need to turn a page in the story, if you need to move things on, if you need to condense a lot of information, um, being able to write a commentary, being able to write is a really good skill. So I would say to any student of film, read, read as much as you can, because if you read more, you'll become a better writer. And once you've been reading more, try and write stuff. That's, you know, never shy away from it, just, you know, start it. Because sometimes you go into, as an executive producer, I've gone into cutting rooms and they say, oh, well, there's gonna be some commentary there. And you think, well, yeah, what is it though? I mean, I want to know what the commentary is. What is the story? And um, I've actually been in viewings with um, younger directors when the, you know, the commissioning editor comes in from Channel 4 or BBC or whatever, and they, they try and wing the, the, the viewing like that, the first viewing, by saying, oh, we're going to have some intro introductory commentary here. It's going to say something like this. And then, you know, and it's a disaster because basically the confidence of the commissioning editor is shattered immediately. And what, what then happens is the commissioning editor comes out of the cutting room and collars someone like me and says, write his fucking commentary for him, you know, or help him do it. For goodness sake, we need to get it sorted out. Um, so, read and write. Uh, other words are available. Other words are available. <laughs> We're having a bit of trouble with player one. So what I've done is I've taken the tape out of player one and I've put it in player two. And I'm able by this button called back in here on the controller I'm able to pluck the time that I entered on player one and then set it into player two so that you can access all these time codes within the um, edit controller and juggle them about and put them where you like. So that's, I don't have to go look for the clip again because I've done that already. So I've plucked it out of player one and I've
planted it into player two. So hopefully now we'll have a little preview and we'll see what happens this time. Let's see if player two plays ball. But Sick people one. who were close to him, he was hopefully very, very difficult. Hopefully in fact, the sound. Sadistic, I'd say. I, I would say that uh, John Davis really was... Good for me? Yeah. Yeah. So that, we're happy with that, so we'll hit the red button there. So that's the uh, edit button called record. But people so the machine's now synchronising again, joining those two frames fact, together. I, I would say that uh, John Davis really was, what could term him, the Caligula of the cinema. Full stop. I think I'd stop there. Come out there. I'm not going to go yep. into an industry. So Michael said he's had enough. I'm going to keep going a little yeah. bit longer just in case there's a bit of atmosphere that I might need to hang over the next bit of sync mm. or the next shot, something like that. Always, always better to take a little bit more than you think you need because if you need to add it later, it's more difficult. So what we can do now is, if I can remember how to do it, is replay that edit. So there's a little button here called replay. And I think, if I remember correctly, that will go back pre-roll the exact same time and it also brings the edit up on the screen that you're looking at. Well, I think that it's, it's interesting. If you were like me, and I'm sorry to mention film, I was brought up on film and I shot film for many years with crews. And, you know, film's a very, very expensive medium to shoot. And um, you kind of had to know what you were doing on the shoot and um, because you just burned through your ratio. and. We made a series of films for uh, Channel 4 called The Classics. They were half-hour films about classic trains, classic motorcycles, classic homes. And they were all shot on 16mm film. Um, and we had 30 rolls of film, so that's 30 times 10 minutes. I can't work that out in my, in my head. But, um, so you really had to kind of think about your shooting ratio. And in my company now, I'm still the person who shoots less than anybody else because I won't shoot things that I know I'm, I know I'm not going to use. Well, they would say, well, he doesn't know that he's not going to use it, but I'm pretty sure when I, you know. And particularly with interviews, sometimes we would, uh, on film, you know, you'd start, <laughs> you would start the sound, but not the camera um, because, you know, the sound was cheap, but um, the film wasn't. And then you would nudge the cameraman when the interviewee said something interesting. With tape, I mean, you know, the idea of ratios and things kind of went out the window slightly because, you know, tape was relatively cheap and um, you could just let it rumble on. Um, and, um, you know, there were cameramen around who didn't really know where the stop button was. So, you know, you just had to be, be mindful of that. Because obviously the more tape you got into the cutting room, the more material you got, into, the longer it was going to take you to edit. Exactly. And the yeah. more, uh, well, the more edit editors work there was, which yeah. I suppose from my point of view is a good thing, but from the program's point of view, possibly not. Yeah. So we've got a bit of... Well, I think also, going. you know, um, part of it, if you're making documentaries or factual material, part of it is knowing what your story is going to be and always being aware of that what you're trying to generate all the time are story elements. So, you know, you're looking... Everything has a beginning, a middle and end. So if you're shooting, if you're making a shot, it has a beginning, a middle and an end. If you're doing an interview or a question, you're trying to get a beginning, a middle and an end out of your interviewee. Um, so my way of going about it was that, basically everything I shot had to have a beginning, a middle and an end. Because it's some, it, it may be that that is gonna be the beginning of your film and one bit of it may be the end of your film. And certainly you're gonna need the end of sequences and the beginning of another sequence. So you kind of look for things that are going to uh, help you form the narrative of the piece. So this tape was actually <coughs> parked at the end, so I'm now winding it back to the front. We'll see if we can find the next bit of One stick. of the nice things about tape was the thinking time. Yes. In that's... rewind. Gives or... you time to think about if you're stuck for ideas, at least you have the rewind time. So what, one, one way of going about this, if you were coming to it cold um, as a film, would be to actually go through all the, um, the interviews. I don't know the whether rushes. You, the rushes particularly the interviews, because it's going to be a factual-led show, uh, and pick out, um, you know, the best bits that are going to help you with the story. Um, and if I was making this film, which is about someone who ran a studio in England, apparently was a bit notoriously 
bullying man. I would I would try and find some little sink bits um, from each of the interviewees to sort of tease up in a in a in a beginning sequence. Um, so this is Lewis Lewis Gilbert, who was an amazing film director. Um, as I say, died fairly recently, but he worked in the film industry way from way way back. It's very dim. It's very dim. It's a bit. That's very. Is that? It's very dim. It's, it's very either been, it's it's either been very... shot by the Prince of Darkness or it is yeah. dim. Or yeah. it is dim. I'm not sure what video control we have on this machine. Obviously, these machines you can adjust the video levels on them. Um, not sure what MOBA in here. I think one of the things that um, in this sort of era of tape, I mean, I came from, I was trained in the film cutting room, um, which was one of the sort of first, I suppose it was the original non-linear editing system. Basically, you could cut film up, put it on a bin, you could organize it, and you could randomly select stuff. Whereas with tape, you were always, um, always at the mercy of the tape itself. You couldn't cut it up, basically. Um, it was purely, it was a purely linear form. Um, so, so on film, we would have actually physically taken the pieces of the interview out that we wanted and hung them on a bin, and I would have logged them. Um, so in a way, that was my, that was my, that was kind of my process when I went to tape. So I, so I found out where things were. Um, well, that's... So the idea is that Michael will tell me what he wants in his film, and I hopefully will make the machines arrive at the right place at the right time. So we've got the first you will, bit of... you will argue with me occasionally. Certainly not, would <laughs> I ever. Um, no, I could put, I can put a view, the editor always puts a view forward because sometimes he's right and sometimes more than, yes. more than often he's wrong. Mm -hmm. but, so if we say that was the, the first thing... The thing to do is always admit when the editor's been right. That's well, the... a very interesting character, John Davis, because as you probably know, he had two sides to him really. Do you want the good side first or the bad side? Maybe I should give you the good side first. We'll go for the bad side. The good side of John. So we, we shuttle should, along, see should, if we get to the back. Yeah. Should yeah. we leave a little gap at the front in yeah. case we find an establishing shot? To put, yes, we yes, could, I we think. Or we'd leave five seconds at the front. Yeah. Just to put that in later if we find yeah. one, if we get a tape that place. He was a tremendous man of his word. So I would go through, when we're looking for a piece to mark, I, I carry on marking, marking, it doesn't do any harm. I can just mark a sentence. Your signature was just a word from him which said, OK, that's a deal. And that was a remarkable uh, thing. So I would mark. In those days. He was also. So I would mark. He was also. If I've just marked that. Topic, it doesn't matter. It's not going to. It's not permanent. I can overwrite it. Because the, the bank organisation was very well run from that. From that. So um, what, what so we would norm, normally do is go through all the material and start looking for some of the stuff. So if, this, if we're going to start at the beginning of the film, we'd want some sort of establishers. So the first thing that comes up, that is, that does look like an exterior of something. Can we play it, it through? the end of the tape, I don't know. We'll rewind it. I'm not sure. Player one, is it in remote? Yes. Doesn't seem to be wanting to go anywhere at the moment. We'll try the other one. It's player one, isn't it? I think so. Error 03. Oh dear, that's not good, is it? Is it? Okay, we've well, got an error. Error, error 03. 03. Let's eject Where's it. Eject, eject that the blue one there. Oops. Oh, careful. No, it's in, I know why. I know why that is because all the all the commands are operable. Let's try that. Oh, it doesn't work either. I think it's jammed in there. Oh dear. 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 Well, Did I do something wrong? To switch the machine off. So that, that still That's works, the idea of switching on and off again. I don't know, we'll see in a minute, we might do. That's, that sounds hopeful. Okay, so what was wrong awesome. with that tape? A bit of a problem there with this tape, I'm not sure what it is. Let's... Uh... No, that's not a good take, that one. Should we try one of the other we'll ones? Have to take that one. We'll have to do the same again. Oh, dear. What's the problem with that? Yes, yeah, seems to be a bit of a problem so with I'm this tape, moving. so I've switched the machine off, switched it, switched it back on again. Age-old way of getting things to work. Let's eject that tape. 
and try another one. I don't know what's there. That's not good news. If that doesn't work, we'll have to change machines. Just make sure we get the right tape back in the right box because that's a, a recipe for disaster in the future if you get the wrong tape. So I've got a try. feeling this machine is, doesn't like... What have we got here? Actually, let's, we'll do that. Got I want, let's, let's try Louis Gilbert who okay. died last week. All right. Interview with Louis Gilbert. Slightly oh. better. There he is. Yes. yes, absolutely. They, but I think they, they, you see, one of the problems in England, we so never take it to the beginning. Just doing that so that it's, we have a reference. I can go back to that point now. I can find that he was he was also. I can go back there and it's how many seconds ago now? It's ten seconds ago now. And I know it's stored in the machine. So if, if Michael says so what do you do? Do you hit return? Just hit the mark in. Yeah. Yeah. And go to the go to button will take it back to that point. But what I can also do is use lots of different bits of this controller, I can mark an out. I don't necessarily mean it as an out, but it just means it's another method of storing some, something else. So I can, I've got one sentence in there. I'm listening for another one. That was his stock in trade, actually. But he, that's about the good side of him. It's all right, now we're going to hit the bad side. The bad side was his treatment of so I've now marked, I've overwritten the previous in with a new in. He, he had the philosophy that he paid very, very well. And, and that in will, will take me back to the beginning I, I of that sentence, which was the bad side. I came in by the picture, I was a freelance mm. director. So he treated me very well. But people who were close to him, he was very, very difficult. In fact, almost sadistic, I'd say. Because one, we had the head of the studio was a man called Earl St. John. I mean, that's a really. Was quite uh, a really man then when I was quite a young That's man. a really nice bit where one he sort of says he, um, he was sadistic. Uh, to see John Davis. Uh, so if I was, if I was, yeah, if I was, if I was putting together a little opening teaser sequence, I would take something like that out. Uh, so we can hook yeah, the audience okay, in. We'll do that. So, shall we go back for the, yeah. the bad side? Let's go back for the bad so side. I just stop the machine. So I've now got an in and an out. The out is irrelevant because it's uh, it's before the in. So I can, uh, if I can remember, set out and get rid of that. So I cleared that one away. So if I now go to the mark that I've put in, and it'll wind itself back, and then we'll find it more accurately on the jog button. <laughs> So I can hear the sound in jog mode. So that's the bad, the bad side. So we're going to start there, but we're going to leave a little gap at the front for a five second gap. Will yeah. that be okay? Yeah, five seconds. I think okay, so if I go to my recorder now, and I've already got in my in time, as I said, of 10.02.00, but I'm going to um, take that time, store it down in the scratch pad, and I'm going to add five seconds to that. And then I'm going to set that back in again. So that gives me now a time for this edit of 10.02.05.00. So that's where we're going to start. It's going to be a cut edit. So I cut. <laughs> it's going to be a cut when the button plays bull. It's been bullied that cut button no, a lot. It's not working, is it? No, it's not going to cut. It doesn't want to cut. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, one way to go about this, I mean, if you, uh, as I, I used to work in a company that. Um, you know, I was expected to do other things. Um, sit, sitting in the sitting in the edit all the time with the editor was 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 deemed to be not a useful uh, use of my time. So you had to be. Yeah, if I was making there. a film, I had to be pretty well prepared. And um, so before I got to this stage, I would have had transcripts made of all these interviews, and I'd have gone through them and marked up the transcripts and found the bits, these little bits that we're looking for now. And I would kind of make a scheme for the editor so that actually the editor could work on the film without me being there. And I mean, in, in, this goes way, way back in the history of making films, um, feature films. I mean, uh, people like Alfred Hitchcock used to rigorously storyboard all his films so that, you know, the editor could basically get on with it. And, um, 
And so that's what I would have done. I would have done, a, I would have done you at least half the film so that I could have delivered you. I'd, I'd come in and I'd talk to you about it and then I would leave you alone and then we'd come back to it. Yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you have to editors have certain skills in some directions and uh, it would might be a waste of the producer's time to actually be here because he's got other things to do. So if he trusts his editor, the editor will get on and do a re to his idea and we come back and talk about it. Yeah. And if it, that's not good, we remake it mm. or whatever. Now I've persuaded the machine to uh, to do a cut, oh. so I've done a vision. Mm. We're going to do a vision, an audio one and an audio two, with two two usable soundtracks on the DigiBeta. So I've got my in time for the recorder. I've got my in time for the player, and there's a big button here called preview. So if I hit that preview button, hopefully the two machines will wind back mm. and uh, present present to us at the edit time. So we're looking at the big monitor now for the previewed edit. The sound is faded up. The bad side. And there we go, the bad side. So that looked pretty good to me. What do you think, Michael? Yeah. So we'd stop the machine and then we hit the big red button, which will record that. 